<laughs> What's up guys, it's Goodman52 and welcome back to another video where I nearly had a bloody heart attack just then on camera. Wicked! Anyway guys, because I nearly died, make sure that you like, you subscribe and you comment to this video and today we are going to be doing an Ask Me, well it's kind of like an Ask Me Anything but it's a Get To Know Me um, video. Um, I put up uh, a couple of things on my Instagram and just asked people my story if they wanted to let me know what was going on, what they wanted to know, everything like that and I've got some of the best questions here so without further ado, make sure you're strapped in and let's get into it. <laughs> Okay, so the first question comes from Lewis Taylor Hedges again, who says, Oh no, not again. How big is your piece? Lewis. F word. Right to you there. But on a real, he's got a good question. Uh, he sent me another one and it says, Who is your biggest inspiration outside of magic? See, I can do a serious question too. Well, Lewis, um, I think my, I mean, it is kind of, he is kind of tied into magic because that's how I know him. Pete McKinnon uh, and his incredible, like, YouTube videos and how he went from, like, nothing to a million subscribers in, like, under a year. How he, he doesn't monetize his videos, he just does it for the fun of it. And I just think he's just an all-round, like, just a great guy and gives so much back to the YouTube community. In fact, I just love watching his videos and... When I watch them, they just strive me to try and do better on my videos and try and film better. So that is one of my biggest inspirations outside of the playing card community. The next question comes from the Beweird guy. He said, do you put pineapple on pizzas? Now, I hope you're not going to unfollow me on Instagram for this, but I do put pineapple on pizza. And I think my best pizza, chicken, see cheese, pineapple, black olive, red onion, peppers, just a little bit of spice in there as well. Just a little bit like, you know, like a chipotle drizzle on top. That'd be like my ideal pizza. Now to a question from KXR. He said... Why magic cardistry or cards are important to you? Now, I think these are important for me mainly because of the connections that you can have with people. And in fact, one of my friends, Andrea, we were hanging out, showing her a bit of magic. She wanted to learn a bit of magic. I thought I'd teach her something. It'd be cool. It's very simple, easy key card routine. And I showed her how to do a try and flip. We just did a little bit like, you know, messing around. And she sent me a video the other day of her performing on her brother. And he was just like, freaked out and she said it's like the reaction that you get from it is just amazing and I said yeah exactly that's the reason why I do it is because actually when you get those in those reactions with people where you know they're sucked into the situation they believe it's so real that's just like one of the best feelings because you you've it's pure amazement and everyone's sort of there's that pause where they don't know what to do what's happened what's going on and as well as that some of the friends I've met from the card like card playing community shout out to the hashtag IG card fam everyone I've met so far um, and some people that I might be collaborating with in the future speaking of Andrea she did drop a lot of questions down here so I'm gonna run through a couple of ones that she has put in what's your dream collaboration uh, or oh, I mean in terms of YouTube it would be great to just link up with Chris Ramsey because it would just explode my channel it would just be incredible Mr Beast would be another good one just he's just again another one of those guys where he's just ridiculously funny and it would just explode the channel even more and bring in a load of guys that I've never met before that'd be awesome but definitely yeah just even then like I mean that's like my dream ones but even just any collaborations with any sort of like up and coming YouTubers like myself would be great just in order for connections and other such things so another question from Andrea who is your biggest fan this guy right here oh without him I would have so many sleepless nights in the summer um, the white noise just allows me to get to sleep and um, and I really just enjoy his company in the bedroom just keep him you know he's just there I just come home it's been a long day whack my fan on you know get in the bed go to sleep so you're my biggest fan thank you for all those nights where I've not been sleepless no, but for real, <laughs> another question that she asked, which is quite a good one. At what age did you become interested in magic? Now, I remember oh, David Blaine's Street Magic special being on TV. I remember seeing Penn and Teller at a young age on TV performing. Uh, they did that series where they went around like Egypt and India and saw the old magic, and then they showed them the updated versions of the old school magic that people were performing. And then I got, I sort of had a, sort of a break, we, you know you had like the dynamo period, we had that which was great and then sort of like tailed off again and a lot of TV shows were there, you had like Troy and stuff but there wasn't much on TV in terms of it uh, and where I lived in a little village somewhere there wasn't a lot of that sort of magic around and then when I went to uni, Penn and Teller Fallers was put on Netflix and I remember just watching them non-stop and being like oh this is so cool, it's so interesting and watching a load of things and watching stuff on YouTube and then I was commuting on the train, I've told this story so many times but I was commuting on the train, there was a kid on the train, they got on there and he had a rope and he just and literally walked on after school and was like this is a normal piece of rope and he tied it up and yeah I mean after watching that I was like I need to I need to learn how to do some magic so I can fool this kid and I did 
and I did fool him and he was bewildered and he was like oh my god what's happening and yeah just from that point onward I was like I need to I need to learn more magic so after Tom giving me a shout out in his video it would be wrong of me not to give him a shout out in this one and answer one of the questions that he has put on my sticker. If anyone's not following Tom, I'm gonna to leave a link to his YouTube down below. Definitely go ahead and subscribe to him. And like he said in his most recent video, that me and him are definitely gonna be collaborating at some point in the future. He said it, it's gonna happen. You guys are looking forward to it, so am I. But Tom says, one trick or routine that you had to perform for the rest of your life, basically, name it. And I think for this one, it's either gonna be Alex Pandrea's Confabogram, which I absolutely love performing and I get the best reactions from people for doing that. In fact, I also then just do it by turning over a card in the deck and having them go through the same sort of process. I'd definitely go for that one, or just a little in the hand triumph flip, spread it like you can just leave it on the table, uh, and I think it's just such a one of those things that really baffles spectators and they really just don't know what's going on And I just think that I think that in itself is a very easy sort of trick that builds momentum for the rest of the tricks that's coming out in your repertoire So Tom, thank you for the question. If you haven't already check out his Instagram and his YouTube in the description down below Okay guys on to the next question and it's another food related question Ian Hall my day one Do you have a favorite food? Ian Food is my favorite food. <laughs> oh. so here's another one from Andrea. She says, how was your first time filming a video and did it feel awkward? Well, my first video is still up on YouTube. My first spoken video, it is absolutely awful, but I leave it up there because you know what? It's all about personal growth. And I can look back on that in a year, couple of years time and see how little of a beard I had and how terrible I was at filming and how much the actual, um, like my actual editing skills and my filming skills have all sort of grown and developed. I mean, looking at it now, I've got like a light box, I've got the camera set up, I also have... <laughs> looking at it now, I've got like the camera set up, I've got the light box, I've got like something cool to film against, like a backdrop, I've got all these playing cards, I've practiced a lot more, I've been out and performed a lot more, so I think now I'm a lot more knowledgeable, I and mean, there's a lot more guys, in, like, you know, I've got, I've had, got my Instagram now where I interact with a lot of people around the world, so I think, yeah, it was awkward, it was really weird, I mean, it was on my phone, I had like a little tripod set up on a pillow, I remember, and it kept moving as I was filming, and it was a 13 minute video where I didn't have iMovie, or anything like that. I'm pretty sure I uploaded straight to YouTube with like a little intro and outro. And there was literally no editing in it. I don't even think there was music in it. There might be, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't. And it was awful. And when I look at it now, it was literally 13 minutes non-stop spoken word with no cuts, no J cuts, nothing. So that is uh, definitely one of the, yeah, one of my worst experiences on YouTube. And my last question comes from one of my good friends who I've known for bloody years. Since I was about, since I was like nine or ten, um, it's Jedi mine, and he said your funniest childhood memory. Now there is far too many childhood memories that me, Liam, my friend Mojo, my brother and Chris used to get up to. We used to call ourselves Team C for see you next Tuesday. Silly things. Used to go out and we used to skateboard all day at this place in my local village called uh, the Mems, and yeah, it's a big group. It's like forty something, and I can remember we did some absolutely silly, silly stuff. Even stupid stuff like climbing off buildings and like jumping into like play park, clotheslining each other off of things, pissing off cricketers that kicked us off the skate park when we were playing, like when they were playing. But I think yeah, I mean we did so much silly stuff. Like honestly, it was just ridiculous. But I think one of the funniest things I can't pin it down to like one one I like one singular story because there was just so much ridiculous stuff that we did when we were younger. I think one of the best things, I remember probably one of the best periods of, of my younger years was just chilling at my friend Liam's house, it was Jedi Mind. And his like parent I think his parents were split and his dad moved away and left him with the house. And he wasn't working because he like I think he just like <laughs> dislocated his ankle his knee at Mackey's. We did something like that and they, he got like laid off and paid for it and he just literally just had this house to live in. So I'd be going to like sixth form and then work and coming back. And yeah, we just uh, just used to just play FIFA and just mess about. And that was probably like one of my best. That was like a really good, that was a really good time. I remember that went into summer. It was a good summer. It was just before I went to uni and that was like one of the, those summers that was just like, yeah, good times, man. Good times all around. Okay guys, so thank you for the questions on the get to know me. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like. Make sure you are subscribed as well because like I said, come and up next week we'll be in Iceland and Norway and I'll be filming a load of stuff so that'll be a great thing for you guys to have a look at but yeah any magicians out there from Norway or Iceland hook me up because it'd be cool to come see you guys go to a little jam or something like that that would be amazing but yeah you know we'll just see what happens but anyway guys thank you for watching as always thank you for being here hope you have a good day and I will see you on the next one Bye. <coughs>